This is a video I've been thinking about making for over a year, but up until recently I struggled to find the reason to do so. Funnily enough, I actually came across Liver King back in October of 2021, before he had gained the massive social media empire he currently has. At the time, I thought he was just another dork trying to cash in on any number of obnoxious douche bro fitness or lifestyle grifts. However, over the last year, his presence online has ballooned to the point that he's become an almost unavoidable figure. If he hasn't invaded your favorite sporting event or podcast, you have probably been scrolling through social media and seen a video of him devouring raw organs and going through a punishing workout while shouting about the nine ancestral tenets. In every case, he has been daunted by the question of whether or not his physique was natural. For me, this was never a case of if he would get exposed, but rather when. Anybody with functioning eyeballs and an ounce of skepticism would be able to see that his body didn't come from eating raw liver and testicles. However, many people were convinced by his story, and that is something I find far more interesting than the simple question of, is Liver King natty? Liver King is a symptom of something much bigger, a problem that is plaguing the young men of our society, and it's worth taking a look at. If you've somehow miraculously managed to avoid any exposure to the Liver King, this video will be very confusing, so let me fill you in a little bit. Over the past 15 months, Brian Johnson, better known as Liver King because of his penchant for eating raw beef liver and other offal, has amassed a sizable social media presence. With over 5 million followers spread across his various accounts, he has become a certified internet sensation, if not a living meme at this point. Visit one of these accounts on any given day and you're liable to see a video of Liver King engaging in his bread and butter form of content eating massive amounts of raw beef organs, or performing one of his so-called blood-burning workouts, such as the Simulated Hunt or the Barbarian, which involves strapping on a bunch of weights and carrying kettlebells while dragging weights behind him with straps. Through these bombastic videos, Liver King delivers his message, that the modern world has deprived us of the necessities that once made our ancestors strong. This has resulted in a world where most people are unhealthy and hate their lives. His solution? A return to ancestral living by embracing what he calls the nine ancestral tenets. And these nine ancestral tenets are sleep, eat, move, shield, connect, cold, sun, fight, and bond. Some like sleep, eat, and move are pretty straightforward, while others are a bit more esoteric. Liver King says that sleep is the first ancestral tenet because it trumps everything else. He makes a few perfectly reasonable suggestions for getting better sleep, like turning off your devices a few hours before going to bed, and wearing blue light blocking glasses if you can't avoid artificial light. There are a few more questionable suggestions though. Things like buying grounding blankets or sleeping on hard wooden frames like his tribe do, instead of a bed filled with toxic chemicals. Side note, he once blew a bed up with a tank. Eat is also pretty straightforward. He suggests dropping processed foods in favor of nose-to-tail eating and consuming the most nutrient-dense parts of the animal, the organs. It's nothing particularly groundbreaking that other carnivore diet grifters and people terrified of seed oils haven't been preaching for a while. The only real spin Liver King puts on it is eating the meat raw, which you probably shouldn't do. And you probably shouldn't eat a pound of liver every day either because it's so rich in nutrients like vitamin A that you could get sick from it. Similarly, Move is also pretty self-explanatory. He stresses the importance of maintaining a healthy level of movement and suggests three 30-minute walks per day. Shield is where things start to become a bit odd. Liver King says, The fourth ancestral tenet is shield because we need to avoid dangers just like our early ancestors did. But instead of running from lions, nowadays we run from seed oils, excessive Wi-Fi, EMFs, and man-made poisons. His solution to this problem is to turn off your Wi-Fi at night and stop wearing perfume, as well as avoiding your off-gassing furniture and toxic flame-retardant mattress. In other videos and podcasts, he's warned against the dangers of keeping your cell phone near your balls, and stated that his Texas mansion is shielded from EMFs. If you keep your cell phone next to your dick and balls, or that close to you, and you have ionizing <coughs> radiation, if you're heating up your... This In is my also pocket right now, holy <laughs> shit. Connect is the most new agey of the nine ancestral tenets, as Liver King espouses the grounding force of the Earth's magnetic charge, and suggests you walk around barefoot to get in touch with nature like our ancestors did. Right, and, and the ground, the Earth, has a slightly negative charge. Our early ancestors were connected to the Earth 24-7, 365. 
But because of the advent of rubber-soled shoes, elevated beds, cars, and houses, when, when is the last time y'all were connected? You primals were connected a while ago. Cold is another one that is somewhat self-explanatory. Although Liver King states that humans are purpose-built for cold, which doesn't really make much sense when you consider that humans come from the savannas of Africa and billions of people live in equatorial regions where it rarely ever gets cold. But whatever. The main point of exposing yourself to cold from Liver King's perspective is the aspect of mental toughness gained from exposing yourself to situations that are uncomfortable. But I gotta be honest, as somebody who takes cold showers almost every day, I think the magical properties of cold showers are a bit overstated. Sun is really just about getting sunshine to build vitamin D. It isn't really anything more complicated than that. Fight is the vaguest of the tenets in my opinion. As Liver King says on his website, our ancestors evolved fighting, hunting, protecting, struggling, persevering, and eventually winning. And when we win, we get rewarded with a boost of dopamine and androgens. The general point of this tenet would seem to be exposing yourself to adversity by engaging in activities that are challenging and make you uncomfortable. I kind of think he could have combined this one with cold for the tenet of something like struggle or evolve. Finally, there is bond, which unsurprisingly is about bonding, because since the inception of our species, we have belonged to a far greater purpose. I will say, Liver King does understand his target audience of socially maladroit male loners because he had to explain both why bonding is important in the modern world and what is the purpose of bonding. The reason I've gone over the nine ancestral tenets like this is to show you that despite being the foundation of Liver King's brand, there really is nothing revolutionary or groundbreaking about them. Even the wooey stuff about walking barefoot, eating raw meat, or sunning your balls isn't unique in the manosphere where guys are chugging raw eggs and fantasizing about Roman towel boys. What has set Liver King apart from so many others within the Venn diagram of fitness, hunting, and carnivore diet has been branding. This is where we get to Liver King's meteoric social media rise. In early 2021, Johnson hired the marketing and advertising agency 1DS Collective to turn him into an internet sensation. This is an aspect of his persona that Brian rarely addresses directly. Rather, he has a few boilerplate responses regarding his decision to join social media. Specifically, Liver King says that his social media loses him money, and that before getting on social media, he was rich and anonymous. And, and I was really reluctant to this because prior to social media, I was rich and anonymous. And now I'm still rich but I'm no longer anonymous. And there's a lot of stuff that comes with not being anonymous that are not favorable things. Right. So why did he start his social media accounts in the first place? That is where we get into what is the keystone story about the Liver King brand. Johnson has said in multiple interviews and on his websites that what drove him to research ancestral living was the battle his children had with chronic illness. My, my own kids were sick. You know, my own kids were taking ambulance rides to the hospital. They couldn't breathe. Uh, my kids were taking hospital rides, ambulance rides to the hospital because they couldn't fucking breathe because they were having anaphylactic shock. They were having these severe allergic reactions. What a horrific <laughs> feeling this is, right? When your kids stop breathing, they're turning blue. You give them an EpiPen. It starts to help a little bit, but you don't even know how it happened or how it's going to come back. Um, they, they would go into this anaphylactic shock. They couldn't breathe. Um, they were taking ambulance trips to the hospital. We had to use EpiPens. Doctors kept giving the same bullshit solution. Both of them? Both, Both of, of them. them. He claims that simply by changing his sons over to an organic, nose-to-tail diet, focusing on organs and bone marrow, they were able to overcome most of their health problems and allergic reactions within a period of about a week. And so, um, how did you discover this new path that, that to, to address their... I just their... started reading. You I started, started, started reading. reading as many books as I could, and then finally I came upon a book. Sally Fallon wrote this book, Nourishing Traditions. We threw out all the processed food, the seed oils, the liquid calories. We brought in nose-to-tail, wild-caught, organic foods, cheaply nose-to-tail stuff like liver and bone marrow and bone soups. Within about a week, our kids did a 180. And I said, oh, my God, if that I quick. kids, uh, I, I would say about five, five, five to seven days, a 180. And now we don't have to worry about EpiPens. We don't have to worry about Benadryl. Also, according to Johnson, it was the simplicity of this lifestyle change that made him eventually want to get on social media to model, teach, and preach the message of ancestral living to the people of the world who are suffering. He typically frames this decision as his North Star or his why in life. My job is... And my job is to take this message mainstream because kids like my kids deserve a better shot at life. What I'm proposing, my thesis is that there's a simple, elegant solution to living a goddamn kick-ass fucking life. 
right? So this is my job as a CEO of the Ancestral Lifestyle to model, teach, and preach this message so that our people don't have to suffer, so that we can return to our highest and our most dominant form. My why in the world is what I've shared with you when we started, right? It's people go to a job that they hate. They come home to a life that they don't love. They sedate themselves with enough junk food, with enough soda, with enough medication, Netflix, whatever, right? Call it a day, call it a week, call it a call. This is their life, right? Again, this is my why. This is my why in the world. Like, we figured this out. It was my fault. It certainly didn't hurt that he owned multiple supplement companies that sell the self-same products he was recommending. Predominantly desiccated organ meats sold through his companies The Fittest, Ancestral Supplements, and Hardened Soil. You'll often see these supplements prominently placed in his videos and during podcast appearances. Usually, Liver King will entreat the podcast host to sample a platter of raw organs and bone marrow, which most of them react negatively to. You just swallow it. You didn't even chew it. You didn't even taste it. Oh, that does not taste good. Wait, <laughs> he didn't even chew it. <laughs> this one I would just swallow, man. I would, I would swallow it fast. <laughs> No way, oh, you're well, joking. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, Wait, did he? Oh, it the primal! <laughs> I think this is actually a very clever marketing move. He could have Liver King Chef Lionel bring in a spread of awful cooked and prepared in ways that would best allow the organ meats to shine through, thus convincing the hosts not only of their health benefits, but also their culinary potential. But I don't think that is the point. After he gets the gross-out reaction from the hosts, LK will bring in one or more of his supplements, typically his desiccated organ pills or his whole beast protein shake, which he promotes as the easier alternative to eating the organs as is. Good. I'm plugging it again, it's the whole beast protein shake, because here's the thing, most people aren't gonna fucking eat this way. This is where we get into the marketing aspect of Liver King and things become a bit murky, because there are reasons to doubt the authenticity of Liver King's message. As you can see from the case study page for Liver King on the 1DS website, it becomes obvious that they built every aspect of his social media brand from scratch. From designing a logo to selecting imposing Celtic symbols for each of the nine ancestral tenets, and choosing a desaturated color palette that was derived from natural ancient pigments, and was honored fairly by an eroded, ultimately grungy font. The planning went as far as creating a name for his followers before he even had a social media following. What Liver King describes as primals. You consider yourself that much of a leader that you're going to call them followers and you're going to call them fans. And I, and I said to myself, I'll, I'll never do that. And I said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to make um, this same mistake. And so I started calling everyone a primal. It all makes you wonder, were the nine ancestral tenets something that Liver King actually believed in before hooking up with his company, or were they created out of whole cloth too? At any rate, the marketing campaign worked extremely well. There was a slightly rocky start while they tried to figure out exactly the right way to market Liver King, but eventually they found the right angle. Within months, he went from having no social media accounts to having millions of followers on multiple platforms. Unfortunately for them, with this rapid growth came a lot of questions and accusations. There were obviously questions about where this guy came from and who he was before social media. Unfortunately, the details are a bit unclear. Brian has given his account of his life prior to adopting this ancestral lifestyle, but he is an unreliable narrator. For that reason, I'm not going to talk about who Brian Johnson was before adopting this persona. At least not right now. The most obvious question raised about Liver King after he burst onto the social media scene was whether or not he was taking steroids. It didn't take long for the debate to expand beyond the steroid question to involve more bizarre forms of speculation, like the theory that he had ab implants, among other things. It's not as if the speculation was unwarranted. Aside from the fact that he's a shade of maroon you rarely see outside of a Kurt Angle match, his body screams steroids. Even for a guy as short as he is, maintaining that degree of size and body fat effectively all year round would be all but impossible for somebody in their 20s, let alone in their mid-40s. If you want to put an even finer point on it, compare Liver King's physique to the bodies of actual hunter-gatherer tribesmen. If these people are eating, sleeping, and breathing the nine ancestral tenets in their everyday lives, why don't they look like Liver King? Another issue is Liver King's trademark blood-burning workouts. According to him, he works out for three to four hours every day, seven days a week. Which is pretty fucking insane. It's on par with or exceeding the strength and conditioning programs of a lot of elite athletes who are taking performance-enhancing drugs. 
Again, for reasons that will become clear, Liver King is an unreliable narrator, and some of his workouts seem a bit suspect, like this Brad Castleberry-esque overhead press, or the video where he claimed to be pulling his truck with his teeth. Now, I'm not here to say these videos were fake, because, honestly, I don't give a shit. The main point is that Liver King's bombastic persona and unique appearance were a recipe for viral success. As time went on and Liver King's social media following grew, a lot of people began to accuse him of taking performance-enhancing drugs. Most notably, Joe Rogan accused him of having an ass full of steroids. This is where Liver King made a critical mistake that would lead to his downfall. He could have ignored these accusations, as most people in the fitness industry wisely choose to do, but he did not. Instead, he vehemently denied ever taking steroids, both in interviews and through a number of sketches. Do you think if I was on steroids, I would have these fucking appendages down here, these legs? Have legs? <laughs> Do you see how fucking little my fucking legs are? You know? Uh, they're pretty... Oh, pretty big? Okay, well, let me fucking go on here. Here's the thing. When I was in college, <laughs> I weighed 175 pounds, and I was single-digit body fat. So now I'm 45, and I've gained less than one pound a year over 25 years. Less than one pound a year. I think at the end of the day, if you say he, he's got an ass full of steroids, I think what you're, invariably some people want to look like Liver King. They want to look like me. And what you're saying is you've got to do that if you want to look like him. And number one, I don't do it. And number two, what I want you to say is, you know what I don't know? So again, for the record, I've never taken steroids. Really? I'm thinking about doing it. Yeah. I'm thinking, you know when what? you're getting to that age, right? Where it's basically considered normal, right? Well, I thought, you know what? Ancestral tenant 10 is have a little fucking fun. Right. And I'm like, you know what? If you've built this biological resilience, I'm like, you know what? I'm healthy enough. If I want to do a cycle, I'm going to do a cycle. And how much you want to bet I turn into the incredible fucking Hulk? You're going to be terrified. I want to be like this. Okay, you, you think this guy's on steroids, right? This is the guy who's on steroids. That guy right fucking there. They're Look. just going to say you upped your dose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you, you know what? I, f I, here's the thing. You can't win with that shit, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, face it head on. I don't. I don't touch this stuff. I've never done this stuff. I'm not going to do this stuff. What's this, what stuff? The the ass full of steroids that he talks about. You've never taken steroids. Never taken steroids. I've never done PEDs other than prioritize, execute, and dominate in life. Um, the other day, somebody said something about growth hormone. Somebody said something about insulin. Somebody keeps going off on the deep end and saying, <laughs> "What about designer drugs that nobody can fucking detect?" I'm like, oh my yeah, god. Yeah. What about that, Liver King? And there's all these peptides too. <laughs> Right? Oh my goodness, I mean, I, I didn't know how deep this could possibly go. What up, Primals? It is time to put the rumors to rest. I just got my blood work done, and the doc is on his way to give me the results. Okay, Liver King, I got your blood results. Show them, don't tell them, doc. Okay, we did find something unusual about your blood. Aha! I knew it! Primal! Primal! So this is what I say to people that make this accusation. Um, if you don't believe this is possible, then I suggest that you take that self-limiting belief, you put that shit in a fucking box, and you bury that next to all your embarrassing shit, and don't open your fucking mouth about it. L let that live with you. Don't let that live with somebody else because the highest and most dominant form that we have to express is in front of us. Side note, I can't be the only one who thinks it's a bit inconsistent to demean people like this when your message is supposedly one of lifting people up and helping those who struggle with their mental health. These denials would end up coming back to haunt Liver King when in late November of 2022, the YouTube channel More Plates More Dates released an expose video that leaked an email exchange between Liver King and a then unnamed steroid coach later discovered to be the YouTuber Vigorous Steve. In these emails, sent from Liver King's company email address, he detailed his PED cycle that included spending over $10,000 per month on pharmacy-grade human growth hormone alone. To support these exhaustive efforts, I've recently started taking Omnitrope. So if you guys don't know Omnitrope, this is pharmacy-grade human growth hormone. So that is going to be roughly 69.6 .6 international units of recombinant, recombinant human growth hormone per week, which is roughly 10 international units per day, which is like a, a fucking really, really high, super expensive dosage that, to be honest, I know bodybuilders who compete at the Open Mr. Olympia who'd use less pharma, pharma grade GH than that. Like that's, that's how high of a dose that actually is. 
To make matters worse, Liver King stated in these emails that he was asking for advice on refining his drug protocol so that he could improve his physique for a social media venture he was working on at the time. As it relates to my goals, I'm the face of several brands, including Ancestral Supplement, which is the handle he used here from his official company email. And I've just hired a team to build the Liver King brand with the goal of 1 million followers by March 2022. I'm pouring ridiculous resources into making this happen, including hosting a video guy that will be living at my guest house and a film crew that will be filming seven days a month stated I have to stay in great fucking shape year round. Maybe take one to two months off per year. Now, Derek's video is absolutely worth watching if you haven't seen it already. He goes in depth on the emails, and there is a pretty amazing and unexpected twist at the end. But I digest. The damage to Liver King's image was done. This expose was so thorough and unequivocal that there was no way to weasel out of it for Liver King. The only option he had was to own up to the charges. To his credit, as a guy who claims he's about taking extreme ownership, he did come out and make a video admitting to using PEDs. Primals, I'm making this video to apologize because I fucked up, because I'm embarrassed and ashamed, because I lied, and I misled a lot of people. Yes, I've done steroids, and yes, I am on steroids, monitored and managed by a trained hormone clinician. As an apology goes, it's a bit underwhelming. Despite the gravity of the situation, he never drops the Liver King persona. Moreover, he spends most of the video restating a position he's mentioned many times in the past, that the Liver King brand has always been about getting out the message of ancestral living to help people who are struggling with their lives and mental health, specifically suicide. Liver King, the public figure, was an experiment to spread the message, to bring awareness to the 4,000 people a day who kill themselves. The 80,000 people a day that try to kill themselves are people are hurting at record rates with depression, autoimmune, anxiety, infertility, low ambition in life. Our young men are hurting the most, feeling lost, weak, and submissive. So I made it my job to model, teach, and preach a simple, elegant solution called ancestral living, the nine ancestral tenants, so our people no longer have to suffer, so we can collectively express our highest and most dominant form. This is my fight. This is why I exist. Following the release of his apology video, Liver King has gone on another spate of podcast appearances. And this is where things start to get kind of weird. Liver King's response to the controversy has been unlike anything I've ever seen. During these appearances, Liver King has opened up more than I expected. Not only has he admitted to his PED use, but provided his explanation for why he was on steroids, blaming it on overtraining and low self-worth stemming from his experiences being bullied as a child. I, I'm convinced that it's my obsession with overtraining that's, that's screwing up my hormones. A mess. You know, the steroids aren't for the message. The steroids are for me. But I think what it really boils down to is, number one, overtraining. And number two, my self-worth. And so I think what it really um, harkens back to is my life from when I was 10 to 15 years old was just a fucking hellhole. I was the only one of my kind at school. I was tiny. I was just a tiny kid. I was the only white kid at school. Everyone else spoke Spanish. I remember I would look at the mirror and I had zero self-worth. I was, I was totally embarrassed. I was humiliated of, like, I became this guy. And I wanted to be anything different except for this fucking guy. I did not want to be this guy. I find this explanation interesting because the story of being bullied as a kid has been an integral part of the Liver King myth. He's talked about his childhood on various podcasts alongside the story of his children having health problems that led him to study ancestral living. Even going back to his interview on Diary of a CEO, he basically says that he works out as a coping mechanism to deal with his childhood trauma. Is there not an element of the fact that the gym is what saved you from the bullies? I'm sure it is. So you, it's a, it's a... Survive, survival mechanism, that place. Uh, I'm sure it is. And, and so much of my message today is that, that strength is an alpha virtue across time and space. It's also interesting to me that in a podcast appearance from months ago, Liver King mentioned thinking that he's fat and specifically cited his love handles. Sometimes I think I'm a little fat. Right? You're thinking it's crazy, what? right? Listen, I get it. Yeah. I, oh I, I get gosh, it. I probably yeah. should have said this on Diary of a CEO. But like, you know, I store my fat in my love handles. Which were a problem area he referred to in the leaked email exchanges with Vigorous Steve. I don't store body fat anywhere except the love handles slash back fat. I need serious help with this. Do you feel you had stubborn fat areas that didn't go away? If so, what areas? Yes. 
<laughs> all caps. Back fat, love handles, nowhere else. During his recent apology tour, he has admitted that these insecurities forced him to work out sometimes three to four times a day, necessitating the PEDs and creating a vicious cycle of abuse. Um, for me to sleep okay at night, I have to put myself in the gym twice a day to kill myself, to crush myself, to destroy myself. And it's at least twice a day. This is what I publicly say. You know, a lot of times I'm getting in there a third or a fourth time, you know, and, and, and that's what is required of me, right, to feel like I did it. Now, I'm not going to say that this is an ironclad excuse, but it's undeniable that there is a narrative thread about his self-image issues and obsession with working out that goes back months prior to the recent revelations. On the other hand, the leaked email exchanges with Vigorous Steve seem to tell a different story. From Liver King's own words, it seems pretty clear that he was seeking advice on his drug protocol because of his plans to launch the Liver King brand and social media accounts. And the fact of the matter is, he seemed far more knowledgeable about PEDs than your average novice. I'm wondering if taking a fuckload of other peptides could be confounding the results and possibly interfering with the efficacy. For instance, here's what I'm currently taking. So here's this stack. Furthermore, the conflict of interests inherent to secretly using steroids while promoting a fitness brand and supplement line should be obvious to anyone. When Liver King has been questioned directly about the issue, he has tiptoed around it. And so um, there's a whole lot of other things that I'd convince myself of. But once I'd convince myself of like these six or seven things, I'm like digging the hole and digging the hole. I might give him the benefit of doubt if, you know, he didn't make himself the face of the ancestral living message and the Liver King brand. What other implications were people supposed to draw from his content other than that his techniques and supplements would help them look like him? To be fair to Liver King, I think he does believe in his own message about the nine ancestral tenets, for the most part. In fact, the leaked emails actually confirm that he does adhere to some of them behind the scenes. I respond well to raw eggs, raw liver, raw meat and dairy. I don't eat any vegetable oils. So you can at least give him kudos that he's like reasonably following the shit that he preaches. He even takes his own supplements. Ancestral supplements, thyroid, ancestral supplements, heart, ancestral supplements, beef organs, ancestral supplements, bone marrow and tallow. Also, despite the fact that everything he says should be taken with a grain of salt, he would have to be a giant piece of shit to lie about his kids having chronic illnesses as a marketing ploy for his message. If I'm being honest, I don't know quite what to make of the expose and his apologies. There are many ways to interpret what he is saying in these post-expose interviews. While Liver King's previous deceptions about taking PED should make you look at his explanations with a degree of skepticism, there does seem to be some sincerity behind what he's saying. On the other hand, it could just be a convenient excuse he decided to pin the steroids on. As if the story wasn't murky enough in the wake of the steroid expose and the Liver King apology tour, new evidence has complicated things even further. Recently, it was discovered that Brian had an old YouTube channel from the days before he assumed the Liver King persona. The videos go back as far as nine years ago, with the most recent being uploaded in May of 2021, shortly before Johnson began his social media ascension. Most of these videos show Brian doing CrossFit or lifting heavy weights, and honestly, he looks strong as fuck. At probably under 200 pounds, he benches 400 and squats 445, among many other impressive lifts. What I find interesting about these videos is how similar and yet different this version of Brian Johnson is to the character of Liver King. He's clearly in phenomenal shape, but definitely smaller than the guy eating raw liver on TikTok. The long hair and beard are missing, and he's much more soft-spoken. People always ask me, how do you stay so fit upside down on your hands? And I always tell them, the answer is the same. I do active wrists and a whole lot of deficit work. However, there are personality traits that are similar to what we see from Liver King. With hanging chains. Oh yeah, little hanging chains over here. So we got 325 pounds on the bar. We call that man weight for all you ladies out there that probably have never done this. Also, in one of these videos, Brian mentions eating grass-fed beef liver. So again, that is a dietary principle that he seems to genuinely believe in. Two things that give me the ingredients to achieve this sort of success. The first is, is grass-fed beef liver, all right? A lot of people want to know, how does a silverback gorilla become a silverback gorilla? It has nothing to do with their DNA. They eat liver, 
And if you send me some stupid bullshit research articles about how the vegetarians, I'll kick your ass. From what I can tell, it looks like Liver King was just an exaggerated version of Brian's natural personality, dialed up to a ridiculous degree. Maybe there is a kernel of truth to his oft-repeated statement that Liver King ate Brian Johnson. And I, I believe if that guy comes out enough, every single time he comes out, he gets a taste for it. He gets a little bit stronger. And I, I believe one day that guy broke out, Liver King. And I always say this, he ate Brian Johnson. He ate his predecessor. That guy's gone. The discovery of this old channel has made me reconsider the potential motivations behind building the Liver King brand. The fact that he had a YouTube channel where he was uploading as recently as 2021 and decided to leave it up is a bit strange. So is the fact that he contacted a steroid coach using his business email address. It's so reckless that it makes no sense if he was really trying to keep his steroid use a secret. There are a few possibilities here. It could be that Brian is telling the truth that he started taking steroids because of his low self-worth. He didn't set out to deceive people, and he didn't believe he was cheating because he wasn't competing with anyone. At first, he was lying by omission, but the longer the charade went on, the more he was pressed by the steroid question, until eventually he crossed the line and began to directly lie about it. A more cynical analysis might be to say that Brian rightfully assumed it was inevitable that somebody would expose him for using steroids, so they planned for it all along. How far ahead they planned and what their plans entailed could be anyone's guess. It will depend on how finely manicured you think the Liver King myth was. My personal opinion is that the Liver King brand was never intended for the long haul. I think it was created with the intention of building a huge following in a very short period of time to pump up sales of his supplements, either so that he could bring in big investors or sell his supplement companies outright. The reason we're starting to find these pre-Liver King artifacts is because he was probably hoping to cash out before they became a problem. The issue for Liver King now is that his actions have irreparably tarnished his message and the reputation of his companies. There is only one way that he can regain any credibility. That is by getting off the steroids, which he has stated his intention to do. Got it. Um, I, I just also want to say this is my plan to do that. This might not work out. But this is my plan to do this. And I believe... Meaning get on off of it may not work out. Yeah, it might not work out. Meaning you may get back on it. Uh, you know what? <laughs> the, again, yeah. this, this is not my intention, but like, let, let, let's say it's been three or four months. Let's say that I... Uh, Though, because of his previous dishonesty, he's going to have to prove it. Probably through some kind of random drug testing. Additionally, Liver King better be telling the whole truth. The sincerity and candor he has shown recently can be completely undone if it turns out he was not being truthful with his apologies. In this moment, he is being given an opportunity to win back the public's goodwill. If it turns out that he isn't being 100% truthful and more examples of deception come out, he won't just lose the reputation he built initially, he'll also lose any goodwill gained by trying to take responsibility for his failings. At that point, it will truly be over for him and there will be no coming back. Perhaps an even bigger issue for Liver King is the damage he has done to the ancestral living message. In spite of the gimmick, I think the nine ancestral tenets are fine. If you adopt some of Liver King's suggestions like getting better sleep, improving your diet, exercising more, and getting out in nature occasionally, you will probably be healthier and feel better, as long as you don't stare at the sun or try to tan your testicles. The problem is that Liver King presented the nine ancestral tenets as a panacea, not just for your own personal health and happiness, but for society in general. That message of ancestral living is completely undercut when the guy who was the face of said message was using PEDs. If they weren't enough for him, how will they work for you? This is why I think the Liver King situation is really just a symptom of a larger issue. If we're going to be totally objective and fair, what Liver King did was no different than what most people in the fitness industry do. For that matter, it's no different than what most pro athletes and movie stars these days do either. The individuals willing to be open and honest about their PED use are extremely few and far between, especially when it is in their best interest financially to appear clean. I would like to think this is no secret, and most people understand that when somebody is financially incentivized to use PEDs, they probably will. Unfortunately, that just isn't true. For a relevant example, let's look at the movie industry. As more and more movies we watch are dominated by superhero films, depicting unrealistically muscular characters. Think about how many stories you have seen in just the last few years talking about how a given actor went through an insane transformation for a role in some cape shit movie that is already 90% CGI. 
I mean, Chris Hemsworth is out there shortening his life expectancy to play Thor, and they CGI'd more muscles on him anyway. Kumail Nanjiani turned himself into handsome Squidward just to do Bollywood dances in the worst Marvel movie ever made. What is the point of it all? How many times do we have to see an actor go onto a late night talk show or an interview for a film and haul out the old line of bullshit about eating chicken and broccoli and working out three times a day? Brown rice, grilled chicken, broccoli, a gallon and a half of water a day, mm -hmm. and working out two to three times a day, six days a week. There was a lot of chicken breasts, there was a lot of lean protein, a lot of vegetables. Basically eating salads and chicken and water. Chicken, fish, maybe steak, steamed vegetables, and occasionally some brown rice or something like that. It has proliferated to such a degree that I think it's become a tacit acknowledgement, a way of saying what a lot of us are thinking without actually saying it. I think most of the blame falls on the industry for normalizing unrealistic transformations and for the code of silence that enables them. That is the elephant in the room here. Nobody wants to talk about it because it's in nobody's interest to do so, just as professional sports leagues don't want the integrity and sportsmanship of their games tarnished by allegations of cheating, Disney and Marvel don't want their brands sullied by the admission that their actors need to take drugs to achieve an unachievable physique. You don't want little Timmy thinking Thor needs to take steroids after all. Otherwise, he might not want to go see any more movies or buy a new piece of Thor merchandise. The same goes for middle-aged Timmy too. If he thinks Thor is on steroids, he's not going to buy that Thor Funko Pop or subscribe to Chris Hemsworth's fitness app. People have become so invested in these movies that any criticism or statement that breaks their fantasy is a personal affront. If you point out that it's not natural for somebody to put on 30 pounds of lean muscle over 6 months when they're in their mid-40s, you'll get a ton of backlash from people saying you're jealous and don't want to work as hard as the movie stars do. How many brands is Dwayne Johnson working with? It's a veritable empire based partially on being the shittiest mainstream actor of the last 20 years, but mostly on his absurd physique. Again, I would like to think that most people would be a bit skeptical when they see a guy in his 50s who was more jacked than he was in his 20s when he was a fucking pro wrestler. But there are a ton of people willing to come to his defense and swear that The Rock is natural, that his freakish physique is just down to hard work and grinding, while you are a lazy hater who doesn't want to put in the effort that he does. It's certainly true that Johnson works his ass off in the gym. It's impossible to look like he does without hard work but hard work is only part of the equation. Guys like Dwayne Johnson and Chris Hemsworth are selling people a false bill of goods, and the ramifications go beyond being ripped off on a fitness app or some shitty workout attire. There are real consequences that will be felt by the young men who are watching this lie be perpetuated by the media. In recent decades, our society has made great strides in breaking down the ridiculous beauty standards held up for young women and girls. Beauty standards that were leading to a mental health crisis of low self-esteem, eating disorders, and self-harm. On the other hand, virtually nobody is advocating against the unrealistic expectations of attractiveness and muscularity being set for young men by people lying about using performance-enhancing drugs. I've heard some morons make the argument that it's not wrong for people to take PEDs if they're not involved in a competitive sport, but it is absolutely unethical to lie about taking drugs if you're somebody making a living from maintaining a physique that is unobtainable without chemical assistance. You are contributing to a system which tells young men that an impossible physique is the ideal, and if they don't look like that, it's just because they aren't grinding hard enough. I'm not saying that we should rewrite every comic book character so they're all skinny fat or have dad bods. Fiction is fiction. But at least when we're talking about the real human beings playing these characters, we should require a level of transparency about the fact that they have to use PEDs to achieve their dramatic transformations and maintain their unnatural physiques. This is why I say that Liver King is just a symptom of a much larger problem. Is he a fraud? Yes. Was his brand completely manufactured for the purpose of viral growth? Probably. Should you take anything he says seriously? Definitely no. However, he's no worse than the vast majority of grifters and influencers doing the exact same thing to make money off of disaffected young men who are looking for something to latch onto. At the very least, Liver King doesn't typically disparage women, and he isn't a racist as far as I can tell. That's more than you can say for most people in this sphere of the internet. This may seem like I'm being a bit of a Liver King apologist, but I'm not. I detest everyone like him. Charlatans, frauds, and peddlers of bullshit panaceas who are trying to take advantage of impressionable people. That said, he is being singled out for the same reason that he blew up in the first place. His personality was too over the top. 
In the pursuit of increased viral success, he made ludicrous claims that would inevitably come back to bite him. In other words, his mouth wrote checks that his ass couldn't cash. But while some people are focused on Liver King, a hundred other hucksters have gone unnoticed. The Liver King brand has been dealt a very damaging blow, one it may never recover from. With all of this said, the way Johnson has approached the PED scandal has made the path forward a lot harder for me to predict. Because of that, I'm kind of interested to see what he does next. He has owned up to what he has been accused of, and even a little bit more than that. Recently, he's uploaded a few older videos to prove that he has been in good shape for years. He also made a video where he went to a plastic surgeon to provide evidence that he hasn't had ab implants. Like, I'm looking around, I don't... I don't see I don't see any scars that you have on your abdomen. So, so softness, there's strong muscle. Some good liver over here. That's right. <laughs> see how that moves? See how it just it digs right in there? There's no there's no way that that would happen if you had an implant in it. You can see the skin's moving up and over that. If these were abdominal implants. Right? If this were abdominal implants, both sides would look like this. So you can see how it's, it's, it's different shaped. Now let's switch to the other side. Yep, Exa exactly the, the same thing happens. So now you can see the definition over here, and you don't see it over here. So if you had implants, that would be all the way across, like that. You can take that however you want, but it is better than dressing up as a doctor and making meme videos to dunk on your detractors. How long he is willing to keep this up, and how far he is willing to go remains unknown for the moment. As I mentioned earlier, Liver King's comeback story hinges on the idea that nothing else about him will be exposed. You can fuck up once and people will forgive you. They'll cheer you even. But you can't pull an Anthony Weiner and keep telling people, no, actually, I'm being true this time. Eventually, they just stop believing you. If I'm being honest, I doubt we've seen the end of this. There seems to be blood in the water at the moment, and people are finding things that nobody knew about before. The old YouTube channel is particularly intriguing to me because it hints at a larger digital footprint. Brian mentions getting emails and Facebook messages from people about his workouts. So, you might know that I get a lot of emails and inquiries on the interweb, um, on my Twitters, on my YouTubes, my Facebook Live. It's entirely possible that years before the Liver King persona was dreamed up, he tried another venture as a fitness influencer that didn't pan out. I haven't been able to turn up much with some light googling, but who knows what other people have saved on their computers for no particular reason. Even with everything we know, there are a lot of unanswered questions about Brian Johnson. Who was he really before he decided to take on the Liver King persona? How did he make the money that enables him to live his lavish lifestyle? There are thousands of people out there right now speculating and digging away at these questions. I don't know what the answers will be, but I'm pretty confident that we haven't seen the end of this story. As always, I want to thank you for watching the video as well as liking, commenting, and subscribing. And a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thank you. Adam Ananiatis, Rusty Shackelford, Iron Shamrock, Bisbing Hates DC, Fightback CBD, Mike Roballs, Meme Jihadist, Random Candor, Fuzi Yunus, Jonas Namensen, Dot Old Neon, Timothy Lee Peterson, Julius Caesar Has Jungle Fever, Tracksuit, Red at 78 Sviat, Jackson, Zach Taylor, Firebrand, Quasi, Jack Trey Bowles, Snepsts, I Said No Cops, Paulo Gomez, Alex, Kyle, Neem, and Kevin Howard.